<laughs> it's six o'clock and I'd like to call this uh, meeting committee of the whole to order. I'm standing in for Mr. Burns Gilbert here for a few minutes. Um, the meeting has been noticed to Evans Print and Media Group, WCOW Radio, Magnum Radio, La Crosse Tribune, Sparta City Hall, and the Sparta Free Library. Are there any changes to the agenda? No, there is not. That being the case, I would request a motion to adopt the agenda as printed. So moved. Thank you. I'll second that. All right. Uh, it is um, moved by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Mr. Wells. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Russ, would you remind us of the mission statement, please? Yes, the Sparta Area School District's mission statement is to educate all students academically, emotionally, and socially to inspire curiosity and resilience. Thank you. Do we have any public input? Oh, we're doing commendation first. Okay. Well, it's that time of year when we start to honor our retirees from the Sparta Area School District, and I'm very fortunate and proud to have three staff members here tonight with you uh, to uh, give them accommodation uh, due to their service to the district. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank Connie Jerome, Educational Assistant, Montessori. Um, would you like to say a few words? Okay. <laughs> Well, it's been 28 years. Um, I actually started as um, a long-term sub uh, for a few months and then turned into a full-time person. And um, like I said, I have one regret about all of the different buildings I've worked in and that I didn't keep notes or a journal at, as to how many different teachers I worked with within the district. And I think there's only two buildings I have not been in in the 28 years I've been with the district. Um, I did tell my kiddos today at school that after 40 years of uh, being in school, they're finally gonna let me go. So <laughs> I thought the kids would question me on that. Like 40 years? Like, yeah, but anyways, um, some, you know, they're, I already got some little notes on my desk that they're going to miss me and all of that. And I'm going to miss them too. Every child that I had within the last 28 years has left a plate. You know, they have a place in my heart and um, I'm going to miss it, but it's time to move on. One of the girls today in the class said, you need to teach the person how re who replaces you how to cook. <laughs> so. So they're going to miss me too, I know, but I really have enjoyed my employment here and, and I look forward to my next chapter. Next, I'd like to um, give an accommodation to Mr. Dave Atlin. Uh, Dave has been a inter math interventionist for us along with a classroom teacher. Um, and he's currently a, an interventionist because he bounced back and forth to fill in wherever he needed uh, throughout that time. So Mr. Atlin, would you like to say a few words or no? Congratulations. Dave is a big Brewer fan like I am and told him he'd be back in time for this first pitch. So we'll keep it short. So <laughs> anyway, uh, the next one, uh, Mike Roddick is retiring uh, from our district as a principal. And I know Mike was here earlier, but we wanted to formally give him accommodation tonight as well. Uh, Mike, do you have any words? Yes. So Right here are two great people 
who made me look good over my 24 years as a principal and my 31 years in the school district. We've got great people here in Sparta, and I'm so thankful for everybody who's helped me. And um, so, yeah, that being said, I've, I've got nothing personal to say except thank you. But I would take some questions and comments if you would like, and that's following our responsive classroom training. <laughs> so, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we'll have more retirees uh, uh, at the end of this month as well. No public input? No public input. Okay, so we will go to reports, financial report. Ms. Hauser. The, good evening. The financial report is attached in board docs. Um, we are wrapping up the end of our year with really the main expense still remaining, just payroll. Um, we, purchasing is done other than purchase orders that have already been completed. Uh, and revenue is really our grant incomes that are coming in now as we're doing those final claim forms for the end of the year. So we're right on track. And next month, we will have the next round of budget revisions for you. Any questions? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Ms. Hauser, will these be available to the public? I see now they're on the administrative side. Thank you. We will move them to public. Okay, thank you so yep. much. And are we, it looks to me like we are about where we should be, but I'm no expert. So please let it. Yeah, know. absolutely. Um, so again, even though we only have about a month and a half left of our year end, we still have a lot of payroll to process. Um, so as of right now, we're looking like we'll be to the good about $150,000, um, meaning expenses came in less than revenues. But again, that is still preliminary, even though we only have a little while left. Um, so we will have budget revisions next month again in June, and then the final ones are actually in July once we truly have closed out our books. Yep. Any other questions? Here's not, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hauser. Going on to business items. Item A, discussion and possible recommendation to move forward with renovations to Sparta High School's auditorium. All right, um, just wanted to give an update. And uh, if you recall, uh, the board back in April did uh, have a lot of strong support for the auditorium project. However, due to the fact of our facility assessment, uh, the board the board voted to 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 pause until that facility assessment you know comes more to life. So, uh, at the end of the month, um, we will have our first facility assessment report. Um, I'm happy to be saying that we have another meeting on Wednesday of this week uh, in the morning. Uh, we have another staff engagement session in the afternoon, right after school. And we also have uh, Bray and uh, we'll be, I'll be there for a little bit before we go to the board goals and development. But Bray is also meeting with the Theater Booster Club and other stakeholders on Wednesday of this week to gain a little bit more understanding, more input about uh, the auditorium and potential projects and that sort of thing. So uh, very excited that we could put that together. Um, and they're here and they said, well, let's talk with them. I know Main Stage has talked with um, the, the Theater Booster Club and other stakeholders, and this will have an opportunity for Bray uh, Architects to talk with them as well. Um, very pleased. We're almost done finalizing uh, the rental equipment for the fall musical. Um, we did find out even if the board would have moved forward with the board pro with the auditorium project, that the speakers are now on and the equipment is now on further delay due to backlog. So even if we would have said go, there is very little chance we would have had this in place for the, the fall musical either way. So um, so that's kind of the report that we have right now, but at the end of the month, we'll have a lot more information about the entire facility assessment uh, for the board to get their first look at. 
Thank you. So this was a report. There's well, no it, business item. There was an it was it's an action item. If the board wants to do something different, uh, it was asked to be put on here for potential action. If there's any different action, then the board wants to to move in a direction. Yeah. Can I just get a little clarity? When you're saying there'd be very little opportunity for the equipment to be here for the, the next musical, how long of a backlog is there? Nine to 10 months. When we looked at it originally, if I might believe Ms. Hauser, nine to 10 months, and that was on the sound equipment, and that was shortly after the board made the decision in April. So mid-April was when we had that update. So realistically, we have 60 days to act to get the stuff in for the next spring musical. I'm going to use my fingers now. <laughs> June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So about 10 months if we wanted to do that. And that's that was the last update that I had. I understand. And, so the rent rental wise, um, cost and timeline when do we when do we need to commit to the rental i certainly don't want to miss that window i'm assuming if the backlog to buy is this long you can't rent on tuesday and have it on wednesday no we have a plan uh we're very close um uh, mr blaha is working with mr er worked with mr erickson to work with the vendor and we're very very close to signing that contract knowing that we do need sound for the fall musical Cost for that would be taken about eight thousand dollars taken on by the district. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm assuming that. Yeah. Is there any other new information that you have about the wiring? Did any of that change or? I don't have anything right now. Uh, once the facility assessment report comes in, then we would be able to maybe give a little bit more information. But I think it's premature for me right now to talk about. Anything that's the wiring when we talked about originally would be about a seventy-five thousand dollar additional cost if we put it up, and then would have to take it down, if we would take it down. So, um, my initial hesitance in this um, in voting yes last month was because I did not want to incur that a potential seventy-five to one hundred and five thousand dollar sunken cost. I think I understand from what you told Mr. Wells, but I just want to be very clear. Does the district have any information at this time that indicates that about the structure and, and the architectural support of the walls in the auditorium? Are we still understanding that there is a potential for a sunken cost or do we have more information about that? We have preliminary talks, but I think it'd be premature for me to mention ideas. Um, we could keep the current, you know, just like anything, we could keep the current envelope. We could increase the envelope in different ways. Uh, we've had some back, we've had some discussions about the auditorium. However, um, I, 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 guess, I, I guess I'd rather not say at this time because the facility report is coming up in, in, um, and then in two weeks. So I'm hesitant to say, hey, these are all the ideas we came up with because they're just ideas and I'd rather not have, I guess I'd rather have Bray here to talk about structural and that sort of thing about can we blow down that wall? Can we increase? What can we do? Uh, what happens if we increase one way or another? We'll have that information, a better chance on uh, on the 22nd. Also with the Bray meeting with the theater Booster Club, that will also give us a little bit more insight about possible ideas. The two big questions that have it, so we don't know that answer yet, are what will the orchestra pit look like and how many seats do we want? And until we can answer those two questions, it's hard to say. If we're fine with the number of seats we have now, the they have some ideas for how to use the stage to create more back of stage and things. But if we want to increase seat size or do something different with a pit layout. We don't know those answers yet. And those changes would affect the wiring and the sound. They numbers. would have a higher likelihood of affecting those. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm asking, I asked the question because this is an action item. So 
after our after the report on April 22nd, if the board were to decide that they want to go forward with the sound based on that information, we would be able to do so at that time. I believe that would be a better way because the board made a motion waiting until the facility assessment. At least we'll have a report then. And um, unless the board undoes that motion, waiting to the 22nd would, in my opinion, fulfill that motion because there's an initial report there. Thank That's you. my opinion. Unless there are any other comments, then we'll move on to the next business item. We discussed that we were in March, right? And I mean, uh, if, if we were to wait for that delay. So, I mean, our spring musical is in April. Is that something that, I mean, realistically, we can wait on? Just just wondering. I mean, if we want, if we want two reads on this, and if we just say, put it off till next month, if we want two reads on this, would that be something that would jeopardize that? There's there's no requirement to have two reads, um, and I would say this is not the first read because we have the idea of the scope of the project. We have the idea of the 75000 approximately if we would put everything up and tear down. Uh, after that facility report, uh, kind of like what Ms. Hauser said, if the board moves towards a decision to say, hey, you know what, no matter what, moving forward from that facility assessment report, we're not doing anything with the, the walls in the auditorium, hypothetically. We're not doing anything that would affect the sound and the, the sound. I think that would be an opportunity for the board to, to take some action at that time as well. But it being an action item tonight, it's an action item tonight that if the board wanted to take some action, they would have the right to do so. And I'm not, I wouldn't worry about the, the first reading or anything like that because we're talking about it right now. So, oh, sorry, since we're talking hypothetical, yep. if, if we devoted to order the stuff tonight, it's not coming in for 10 months anyway. If we voted on tonight. So we're not paying for wiring. Nope. All we're doing is bumping ahead a couple of weeks the time that the equipment that we need would actually be here and be able to be installed. This is a committee of the whole recommendation. So either way, you're waiting two weeks. Mr. S, could you please ensure that the report that we get will be sufficient so that we can make a determination regarding the structure of the walls? If, if you could request that we have that information. We we can, they know uh, when we talk to Bray, we know that this is a big meeting for us with the auditorium. So they will work very hard. And part of that discussion is to work with our, uh, our theater boosters and other stakeholders to really hone in on that auditorium, because this is a big thing. So we did ask them, we're going to focus in on the auditorium. They're still doing other work. They're going through, we're having, you know, stakeholder engagement, but they know very well and very clear that the board may be taking action on the 22nd to really decide if we want a larger auditorium, if so, how much, if you want a hundred seats, this is what it would be. If you want 300 seats, this is what it would be. Um, but we'll be able to give you those ideas. Um, but once again, we're in the conceptual uh, stage and, you know, we're going through the facility assessment and what happens if the board decides we want to brand build a brand new one. And that would be, doesn't mean that we can't go forward, but those are options that if we want to build a brand new facility in some area, hypothetically, but the board could say, nope, we're keeping the current envelope. Okay. And the decision has been made at that time. And then the, the board can make that decision whether they want to move forward or not. So the $8,000 rental takes care of our fall show. What about the other events and the other performances and the other uses for the auditorium after that and before April? Um, do we have any, or maybe we can't, oh yeah, this is auditorium, so we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. What are our plans for 
probably to do the same thing we've done, you know, kind of put our own pieces together. I know we have some portable systems uh, for concerts and that sort of thing that they've used, but all I know is, is that for the fall musical, they'll have their, their materials. I have not looked into uh, the choir concert on, you know, in the middle of October. Um, we haven't looked past that. So when you say we'll do the same thing, do you mean we'll rent equipment for them or we'll piece together like we have been in the past? I'm not sure. Mr. Blahog, do you know how the choirs have worked? With, did they rent their own? I don't think we've rented equipment for choir in the past. We're talking choir specifically. So we did have a rental agreement. How many rental or uses will the auditorium have between October and April? We have the we have the fall choir concert, thinking off the top of my head. We have the musical. We have the holiday concert. Um, I think that those are the big ones. We do have some presentations in there that we bring our own little our own portable sound systems in. And that sort of thing, kind of like we had our presentation yesterday on Wednesday of last week for our insurance, and we brought in our own portable system. Mr. Blah has a nice, very nice portable system that we use with lapel mics and everything like that. Thank you. Further comments? If not, I'll turn this back to Mr. Burns Gilbert. Is that any further comments? Do we? Is that what you just said? Okay. Perfect. Thank you all. Yeah. Sorry for running a little late. I know, right? All right. Mm -mm -mm. That was three A business item. Uh, let's move on to three B then. Discussion and possible recommendation to approve the purchase of a new dishwasher at. Herman Elementary. Ms. Hauser. Thank you. I also invited Cindy Testing tonight to help fill in some of the blanks with the specifics of the dishwasher as her and her team um, have been struggling with our machine at Herman since the day the building opened. Um, so this goes back a couple years already um, and the board at that time did have knowledge of our concerns. Um, we discussed going back to the vendor with warranty issues. We discussed replacement at that time. Um, and the long and short of it is we've had a mass series of issues that range from um, leakage to wires burning to you name it. Uh, and every time we would get assurances that that was the last problem and it would be fixed. And so we haven't pushed this issue, but some of because we kept waiting for that to be the final fix. Um, but over the past month or so, there's been some issues that have caused us greater concerns, such as wires starting on fire, that thankfully our staff caught it right away, but it could have turned out much worse. And kind of at the point that we're at is, we just really believe we have a lemon of a machine and we are fortunate that we still have some funds left in our Herman referendum budget. Um, and so we can do this without an impact to the general fund. And the reality is this machine should last us 20 years or so. And we've just been having lots of struggles. So what we're recommending is to purchase a Hobart machine. So the current brand is a champion. Um, Hobart we have in the high school. Meadowview. Um, and we've had great success with it. It's um, been very reliable. They're highly rated. And so what we did is we spec'd out the exact machine that's tried and true with us. Again, um, uh, better built machine money would say. Um, and we did get three prices from three different vendors. And if you have any more specific questions, I'll invite Cindy to answer those, but that's the overview. 
So the machines you can see are um, fairly close in price, but our recommendation is the tap machine. Um, again, they're all the same. It's really the vendor that we uh, order from. And so the cost would be $51,789.50. Anything to add, Cindy? You can come up to the mic. <laughs> now it is. <laughs> Good evening. As Leah said, we would recommend uh, the Hobart machine from um, Strike Equipment um, Company. <clears throat> and that one includes a $1,000 focus on energy rebate. It's a five-star energy rated. Um, the Champion machine, when it was put in, it was a machine that I, I had not had dealt with in my 42 years. So thinking, boy, it's going to be a good machine, but it's been nothing but um, a nightmare to say the least. It's been very much of a struggle for the kitchen staff. We've had to go eight, nine, 10 days without dishwasher, having to do wash, rinse, sanitize, and compartment sinks, um, putting kids on styro. Um, it's not good for sanitation. So we're hoping that you will um, help us. <laughs> and um, get us a new dishwasher. And the Hobart dishwasher that's been in the Meadowview School has been here 23 years. Very little um, issues as far as maintenance. So um, we just feel the Hobart machine is the best machine to go with. You get what you pay for, and it will last the district for a long time. Thank you. Any board members with questions, comments? Anything else, Ms. Heller? Yeah, you want to go? Sure. Um, what what remains in the Herman Referendum Fund and what remains in the Nutrition Services Fund? The Herman Referendum Fund has over $900,000 left, so just shy of a million dollars. Um, administration has got together and come up with a list of items that we're working on pricing, but this was included in that list of items. So um, there are funds available. As far as the nutrition fund balance, Cindy? Currently right now, we're sitting on about $471,000 and that's due to the COVID um, monies that we received. We've got a higher reimbursement. And I just wanna remind you that um, USDA DPI recommends that we have a three month operating um, revenue on hand for things that come up. And what we're currently operating on, that would be about $700,000. So we're a little short of that, but we have never had $471,000. We've always uh, managed to operate kind of at a break even or um, 15,000 to the good, 30,000 to the good. Um, in the entire time I have been here 15 years, we have only taken from the general fund twice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does the, I'm not a huge fan of passing our issues on to the next guy, but does our lemon have any value? Is that something we can sell or, or is it just scrap? We are looking to scrap it. It is a lemon and it would not be fair to put it on a surplus auction and have, um, young couple who's starting out a restaurant or another small school receive our problem. Um, maintenance company out of Eau Claire, Metropolitan, ASC1, said we will continue to have these problems. All of the maintenance that we've had done on this machine is all in warranty. Our warranty expires June 30th of 23, so this June. Hobart will take this machine out and scrap it. It's good. Anything else? I'm wondering, is there a deadline for using the Herman referendum funds? No. Um, I have a question on the, is there a warranty or anything coverage like that for this new dishwasher that we'll be able to 
make sure is part of this next, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully next few years. To, yeah. yeah. Um, normal warranty is is a year, and because Hobart would be installing it, we'll get an extra six months, so we'll have a 18, 18 month warranty on it. Any other questions, comments? I'll look for a motion if there's no other discussion here. I'll move that we recommend to the full board approval of purchase of the new dishwasher at home. I would second that. Motion by Mr. Hendricks, second by Mr. McKenna. Uh, let's do a roll call. Do we have to be more specific on that motion? Through strike, maybe. Uh, motion to move for the purchase of a new dishwasher at Herman Elementary. Do you want to add the sure. cost to that sure. friendly add, amendment? Add the cost to it at 51789.50. Not to exceed? Sure. I'll still second. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. McKenna? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Ms. Behrens? Yes. Mr. Burns Gilbert? Yes. All right. Motion passes to move forward. 601 absent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Keep her moving to 3C discussion and possible recommendation to approve the purchase of a new maintenance van. Ms. Hauser and Mr. Drew? Perfect. Uh, when we presented our capital projects long range plan to you uh, just about a month or so ago, one of the items that we talked about was taking a deep review of our vehicle fleet and determining um, what vehicles we needed, what we currently had as far as years and mileage, and seeing uh, what the different users in our district needed and for which purposes. And we called that right sizing the fleet. Um, since that time, we have gone through our fleet from both a uh, co-curricular standpoint, looking at the data reports on what our usage has been over the past several years, uh, also talking with our maintenance technology and nutrition team uh, to see what their needs are. And then again, looking at the age and the mileage on our current vehicles. Through that analysis, we found three vehicles that we believed were appropriate to, um, to put to auction. None of these three vehicles were being actively used or used at all. Uh, and they did still have enough value in them that we thought they could go to auction. And these three vehicles were able to be reduced without any replacement. So no need in the fleet. Uh, so this is pictures of those three vehicles. Um, The auction ends in two days. We put them on Wisconsin surplus auction. Uh, the costs continue to climb as you get closer to the end of that auction. But as of right now, the Ford 350, the current bid we have is at 3749 The Ford Transit, 8295 um, And the 2006 Ford is at 4598 and again, we would anticipate those would continue to grow over the next two days. Addition, in addition to those three vans, we have one other maintenance van that looks very similar to that maroon color van, that middle picture um, that our maintenance team is using. The trouble that we're running into with this van is it's not at a height where the maintenance personnel can climb in to grab the tools and equipment that they need. They have to crawl through on their knees. That used to be a transit van that the seats were removed. Um, and this van that's pictured here, we do have one other van similar to this in our fleet. And this purpose, um, 
would work better for the department, which I will let Justin tell you a little more about. Yeah, we currently have a four transit van in use uh, in our maintenance fleet. Um, it serves well for not only um, everyday mechanical things that we go fix, but um, we're able to fit um, any uh, anything we need to move school to school as well. Um, they're able to stand. Uh, we can put ramp. We can put a ramp in the back, uh, so it's easier to load things. They have a side. Um, door as well, so it's easy easier to uh, it's more accessible. Um, so that's what I would recommend for this purchase. Typically, we get quotes from our local companies, whether they be out of Sparta or the La Crosse area. However, none of them have vans available. Um, and many are out quite a few months in advance if you can even get on a list at all. We were able to find three dealerships that have these vans readily available. Um, and this is important because we believe we could purchase this if the board approved before June 30th with the excess funds from that have been clearing up from the Sears budget, which is typical as we come into the end of the year. So, um, the one in Ra at Rochester Ford is just a tad more than the one at Hillary Ford, but it's a closer commute. So we would recommend that one. They all have the same features. And if we take that um, cost of the 50,000 and subtract what we currently have on those auction vehicles, the net cost would be 33,000. We would also have one additional van that we would put on auction. We just can't put that on auction until we know if we have a new one or not because it we do need that vehicle, a vehicle in the fleet. So the net cost would likely be somewhere around 25,000 if this were approved. Any questions? Thank you. Questions from board members? What is the fourth van then that's being replaced? What like year and miles? Uh, year and miles on the fourth van that's being replaced, or, or year, I guess, just to get a comparison of how you're coming up with the the eight thousand as compared to the similar van that's selling for thirty five hundred. I'm not sure what the current mileage is, um, but I can definitely find that out for you. What year is it? Oh uh, six, I believe. Any other questions from board members? Yes, I'm wondering, will we repurpose the other maroon van that is being used for equipment now, or is that the van that would go? That is the one that would go. And Mr. McKenna, um, we don't know if we'd get 8,000 for that one, but we're likely thinking the prices on the other three would also go up a little bit more over the next two days. I remember in previous meetings when we were talking about purchasing the lawnmower, we had talked about additional warranty. Does the district ever purchase an extra warranty on vehicles? Not that I'm aware of. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Is that uh, something you'd like us to pursue? and bring that to the full board just, on the 22nd. Just one last question for clarification. We're talking about the, the additional revenue that this would be paid for out of. That That's the same money that we had talked in previous meetings about being able to use as revenue stabilization in next year's budget, correct? Kind of, yes. Um, so rather than additional revenue, it would likely be expenses that we don't end up incurring. Um, when we talked about the budget report just a little while ago, I said somewhere about 150,000. This would be assuming that we come in even higher than that. So if we end up with another, in essence, you're giving approval that if our budget comes in even more favorable, that I can me and Mr. Russ can make a quick move to sign off on a purchase order for this. So this is typical at the end of our fiscal year, um, particularly in maintenance and technology. 
we have a list of things off of our long range plans that if we can bump up the purchase a little bit, we do that. So basically with the goal of having a break even budget or so on. Um, so we would still want to retain that 150,000 for revenue stabilization. This is assuming we have even more so than that. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm moved to. Um... Oh, Mr. Hendricks, could I just sure. say one more thing? I um, I don't see any harm in getting information regarding a warranty that would just provide more information for the board. So if you could do that, please. I'm writing it down, Mr. Drury, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? As I entertain a motion? Yeah. Uh, I'll make the motion to purchase a new transit van for a new maintenance van for the district. Do you want to be specific in that motion? Uh, not to exceed $51,000. Motion from Mr. Wells to recommend a purchasing of a new maintenance van for the district, not to exceed $51,000. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second from Mr. Hendricks. Any other discussion from board? We move on to a roll call, please. Mr. McKenna? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Ms. Barons? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Mr. Burns Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. All right. Motion passes 6 0, one absent. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to item three. Getting my lines mixed up here. 3D, right? Possible action, discuss possible action to approve resurfacing of Meadow Views tennis courts. And Ms. Hauser, Mr. Jury again. Yep. Um, so also when we reviewed the long range plan, there were questions about um, what have we already pushed off? And this would be one of those items. Also, when we look at what to bring to the board, we're keeping that facility study in mind. So things that could be impacted by the facility study, um, this is one of those things that we would need to do either way. Um, and we are past the recommended time of replacement on this um, item. So I'll let Mr. Jury talk about the need. Thank you. So these pictures are uh, just a, a couple of quick pictures of the cracking and the holes and, and whatnot that are happening right now on the court a uh, tennis courts um they were resurfaced in 2017 and uh we are we are at the, we are at the point of uh risking if we don't take action now of um having to redo the whole courts if we don't resurface them um at, especially after meeting with the uh one of the companies um who does this uh so um so when when we when there's cracks in the um tennis courts the moisture uh seeps in underneath the the surface expands in the winter and then creates keeps continuing to create cracks and then ultimately you have to re, re, replace the um whole court if it does not get fixed Um, this quote includes power wash total areas. Uh, they also check the nets and posts and re, uh, reset them if needed. Uh, right way tape system, uh, they tape all the cracks. Uh, and then they have two coats of acrylics resurfacing. And then they uh, retape it or relined the um, quartz as well. And it comes with a three year warranty. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately for us, the Midwest uh, seal coat uh, did our last uh, resurfacing and the two others that are in the area do no longer either do it or will not travel uh, this far to um, take care of that. 
Um, so when we did this in 2017, we also brought to the board at that time, I think two quotes, because there just aren't many companies who do this. Uh, Midwest Steel Coat back in 2017, we didn't have experience with them, but many of the other districts in the area did because tennis courts are so expensive to replace that this is a way to extend the life without going through that full replacement. So many districts had found success with this. We tried it in 2017 and we also have had success with it. We are previously on closer to a three-year rotation. Um, right now we're about six years out, but you can see we do have cracking. And so um, with this though, there's that sweet spot of when it works versus when it's gone too far and you need a full replacement. And so that's why we're bringing this one to you tonight for consideration. Thank you all. Any questions from board members? Do you have any experience of what that whole replacement would cost if we waited? I do not, but I can definitely find out for you. Any other questions? If we go ahead with this um, seal code, there's a three year warranty. Would your plan be, if possible, to replace it in three years? Like, or not replace, but reseal in three years? Or would we be able to stretch it out a little bit farther and that warranty re include repairing within those three years? Mm -hmm. They definitely get monitored every year. So we would do the inspection. Um, based on our past experience, I'm guessing we could go to four or five years um, or six. Uh, but yeah, we would inspect it regularly and for sure catch anything at that three-year mark. And the warranty includes repairs? Yes. Within those three years? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm just going to go back back to what Pat said on the last <clears throat> agenda item. This won't jeopardize any of our. So I know we were planning on rolling a lot of these dollars to next year. This won't jeopardize an, anything that we're planning on doing in the future, right? I don't know about jeopardize with this one. The timing will depend on our excess funds and if it comes before July 1st or after July 1st. Um, in the most recent version of the budget that we have for next year, we did earmark, I believe $200,000 for capital projects. And so um, if possible, it would come out of this year. If not, it would be one of the items that equal the $200,000 spend next year. This also is an item that would qualify for Fund 46 as well, since it's on the long range plan. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Just clarity. You're saying if possible. So again, if this, if our budget came in this year beyond the $150,000, beyond the dishwasher, we would do, no, not the dishwasher, the, the van. So we'd be talking about $275,000 to the good. We'd do it this year. If it did not, it'd get pushed into next year's. I'd make the motion to approve resurfacing of Meadowview's tennis court uh, to the full board. Do you want that price, man? Using Midwest Seal Coating for a total cost of $74,000. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Hendricks. First motion by Mr. McKenna. Any other discussion from board members? Otherwise, we can go to a roll call. Mr. Burns Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McKenna? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Ms. Behrens? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. 
All right. Motion is recommended. Six zero one absent. Thank you. And we'll, uh, I guess, keep you up there for the next one too. So business 3E discussion, possible recommendation uh, at improvements at Meadowviews PA system. Yep. Uh, so this one was requested by a board member that we bring an update on the extent of the project and what the cost would be. I also wanted to mention, um, realizing we have some newer board members, it's pretty typical this time of the year that we see a lot of buildings and grounds related projects because a lot of that work happens during the summer months. So just so you're aware, this is a typical process. Um, as far as which year the purchases come out of, it's really me watching the budget daily as we get towards the end of the year to see what costs or um, budget dollars are freed up and then making that determination if it's before or after July 1st. So, um, so regarding the PA system, I will hand it over to Justin. Currently, uh, we're running into a lot of issues with our PA system at Meadowview, um, not working, being too quiet, uh, too loud in some areas, um, as well as our, our bell system is outdated. And uh, we're actually having to change the uh, time on our laptop manually, uh, daily. Uh, the program that we use for our bell system uh, cannot be updated anymore. No, it no longer is supported. Um, so if it crashed, we wouldn't have bell system um, at Meadowview. PA system is original to the building. Um, it, issues are occurring and the speakers outside are not working as well. Um, and we are looking to remove and install uh, all of the PA and bell system, update the speakers uh, and additional outside speakers. And uh, we're looking to repurpose some wiring as well. Um, we're already going into this wanting to prefer Banco uh, due to they are currently at Herman and the high school. Um, having the same system helps our maintenance department, uh, also our IT part department um, when we are needing to fix or update. Um, there is a big difference in price. Uh, for Banco and uh, Sounds and Media Solutions. Uh, reason being is Banco is also are going to be repurposing a lot of um, a lot of the current uh, hardware, if you will, uh, and wiring, and um, where sound and media would be using all brand new speakers and wiring. Um, we are currently, the third is uh, CEC. We will be uh, meeting with them tomorrow, so we don't have a quote on them yet. Um, we, and since we already have been, uh, came into this recommending Banco, I would ask for approval for $52,884 uh, to move forward until we receive the third quote for a communication engineer company. Sorry. So to reiterate, we're asking for approval of a not to exceed amount for a PA system. Right now, that would be Banco. If CEC were to come in lower, we would bring that to the full board meeting. Um, but Banco, we do have experience with in our district. Again, they're in our two other largest schools. And so there is a lot of benefit for that consistency of systems from a repair and maintenance perspective also. Um, so if you would like to recommend Banco, that would be fine. Otherwise, if this is a project you'd like to move forward with, we'd look for a not to exceed amount for approval. Thank you. Any questions, comments from board members? Yes, I have some questions. Um, so with this new PA system, it's a complete tear out except for the wiring and some hardware and reinstall. 
Will this in any way improve the safety and security of the district and this building in particular? And how so? Yes, that absolutely will. Um, it will be in essence, having a brand new paging system in the building. So um, if there's classroom holds for any numerous reasons, um, we can assure that we can safely communicate with any of the occupied spaces in the building. Uh, it would also give us a better ability to communicate with anybody who would be outside during times that we need um, to communicate messages. And every room will be covered? Every classroom, every room? Correct. Can you name any of the locations for new speakers? Or is that not possible? Yeah. Okay. So if you look in the ceiling, there's like that white tin, whatever, metal piece. Um, that piece would stay but the brains inside of it would get replaced. So the wire would stay, the electronic mechanism would get replaced, the metal cover would get put back on. That's the Banco quote. The sound and media would be replacing the wire, the brains and the metal piece. And so that's where we're able to save some money with the Banco quote, but it will still be new functionality in each of the spaces. I guess I meant regarding the additional outside speakers, but I don't want to say anything that would. They will give safety. full adequate coverage to the ex full perimeter of the building. Okay. There are seven of them total. Other questions from board members? Is it safe to assume that budgetarily this falls under the same category as the two previous? Okay, so that being the case, all three of them relatively the same amount of money. Could you prioritize the three for us? I mean, if I've got fifty thousand, I'm doing X. I've got a hundred thousand, I'm doing X, and I got one fifty, I'm doing all three. How do you? Mm -hmm. So we haven't had this conversation, but I'll speak absolutely the PA system because of the components of safety and security would be my, my number one. Um, number two and number three, two is for the kids, tennis courts, mm -hmm. and then three would be maintenance. Knowing that I would make a motion, uh, to approve improvements to Meadowview's PA system using Banco for $52,884 and 57 cents. A motion for Mr. McKenna. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Second for Mr. Wells. Any other discussion? Is there a warranty? Just the one year warranty on it. Okay, so within that one year, it would take care of parts and labor or parts only? Do we know? I believe just parts. Um, any. Yeah, but I can confirm with that. Mr. McKenna, I should have clarified also, some of these we may not be able to get by June 30th, so priority may shift based on availability with timing. I have a question um, along the lines of, I think Mr. Drury said that, so the Banco would do the repurpose, right? The hardware wiring, those pieces. Can you, can you speak to the why behind that? Because I'm thinking of this lemon dishwasher. And if we're going to keep using 20 whatever year old wires, right? Can can you talk through like the reasoning there? Yeah. So we actually uh, took a hard look at uh, both companies. And I took a hard look at what we uh, currently have. Um, and Banco uh, and I discussed and looked at the prints and we feel that the wiring is still good um, as you could see the hardware the metals are still good so there's no reason to replace that and if we can save some money that way is why we went that route 
we're not worried that using those same wires will have us replace this sooner than we would. No, typically, uh, speaker wire does not, uh, because of the voltage, there's low voltage going through it, so it doesn't get used or the longevity of it is is better than a normal wiring. Thanks. Any other questions, discussion? We'll confirm the useful life of that wire and bring that to you before the full board meeting too. Perfect, thank you. Uh, otherwise, I think we have a motion and a second, I believe. Did we get a second? I think so. Roll call. Um, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say one thing. Yeah. Um, Mr. McKenna, did you want to name Vanco? Or you did. I know you did, did, okay. Okay, very good, thank you. Roll call. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Behrens? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Burns Gilbert? Yes. Mr. McKenna? Yes. All right, we're recommended to move on for a 6-0, one absent, thank you. Uh, moving on to item three, F discussion and possible recommendation to approve the 2324 Sparta School District and School Student slash Family Handbooks. Mr. Russ? Yes, every year at this time, uh, we bring forth the student and family handbooks for each of the uh, respective buildings. Uh, a couple of years ago, we went to one district handbook. Um, so if you go in there and look, it's all on um, on board docs. You'll see the district expectations first, followed by Southside Early Learning Center, and we go down. Um, it's an electronic format, and uh, all of our buildings next year will not have planners um, that will have the actual book in there. They've all gone digital. Uh, early Southside might have some printed things, but uh, it's all online, and we would be able to you know, update if we needed uh, with more information or anything like that. So um, the the principals, uh, directors, and myself did go through, um, and we wanted to bring towards uh, the major changes to you. And we only really had one major change, and that's uh, I've asked the building principals and assistant principals to be here to to talk about this. Um, but before I get to the headgear proposal, uh, we did update our policies went through and and updated those, uh, but those were really the major ones. But uh, the headgear one um, is right now, we do not currently in, pol in, in previous policy, it specifically said no headgear, uh, except for a religious exemption, which we had a process outlined and that sort of thing. Um, our new policy that we adopted does not have hats or headgear specifically listed. However, it is still in our handbook. Okay, so uh, the building principal, we've talked about this. I can tell you as a high school principal, we've talked about it in past cabinets. And this year we thought that we would bring this change to you that uh, headgear would be allowed uh, at the specific buildings under specific situations. Um, we security has come up. Uh, we have other local schools that do not have a head. I'm just gonna call it a hat policy for, so I don't have to say headgear all the time over and over, but um, so the hat policy um, and they have shared that it really hasn't increased. You're going to get a little bump because they can do it. Then after that, it's eh, into that sort of thing um, for safety and security. Uh, we've been told that it's easier to find somebody with their specific baseball cap. Uh, because it's usually personalized and that sort of thing with that way. So, um, but those are the main changes that uh, the biggest change that I feel is to, to bring towards you for your recommendation tonight, along with the rest of the handbooks. And we do have the administration here to answer any questions about any part of the handbook, uh, hats included. Thank you very much. Any questions right away from board members? I do. So the um, what we're looking at is a draft, or are we looking at last year's and the changes will be made to this? Because I'm looking on page 137 with respect to caps, because I was curious about that. <laughs> and um, 
and it still prohibits caps as it here. Mm -hmm. Page 137. Yeah. And that is in, uh, that must be in SHS. Yes. That would change if the adoption would go through. Do you have any more questions, Ms. Hendricks? No, sure, I have one. I just want to make sure uh, this was considered, uh, not necessarily something that uh, I, I'm swayed for in either way, but I just know with our military population, I know that the main reason, well, I was told a long time ago, that the main reason why this policy was enacted was because of our military population, uh, like the, the view of respect when you take your hat off the second you walk into the doors and no hats in the building and whatnot and maybe not necessarily a safety security thing but maybe a respect thing kind of like why maybe maybe not to the extreme of this but like kind of not like calling your teacher by their first name kind of ordeal so um just just something to consider um i'm not really too concerned about it either way though Thank you, Mr. Wells. Any other comments, questions from board members? Are the building principals on board with this? Yes, they are. And they're here tonight. If you, every building, uh, Ms. Everson Riley couldn't speak to it, um, but the, the buildings are represented here tonight. If you have specific questions. So you did say certain circumstances or certain situations that would be allowed? Is that what I heard you say earlier? No, we would allow them. However, um, when we start talking about headgear, the question in the classroom is, I need to see your ears. For example, we'll allow the hat, for example, but the buildings will say, you know what, no hoods because the teachers need to be able to see your ears because we don't want ear pods in. So when we start, the hats will be allowed. Um, however, you need to be able to see your ears. So you can't just pull it all the way down and listen to your iPod while the teacher talks and say, well, I got a hat on, I'm okay. So there's gonna be certain regulations what our kids need to do so to make sure we have the best educational environment for all. If there's any, um, you know, with, you know, the gangs, well, they're all gonna be, you know, in the past, um, we've had this policy for the past 15 years. Uh, and the policy is still in there. If it's gang related, and if we can prove it's gang related, it will not be allowed. That's it, it's that that we have that right to do that as long as we can prove that it's it's a gang related and it will cause a substantial disruption. We do that right now. So, but uh, right now it's we do not have it. Uh, sales, um, you know, I believe Meadowview's got a hat day coming up here for a great cause for a great cause. Um, so it really starts to solidify, are we gonna do this uh, or not? Um, the teachers, I haven't spoken to them, but the administration has said, unfortunately, we have some kids that make some poor choices. Mr. Hendricks, take your hat off, takes his hat off, walks around the corner, let's vibrate back on. Mr., uh, I don't know your name, please take your hat off. Mr. Hendricks goes right by, now we have a power struggle. Uh, some of our kids for their social emotional learning, they're very comfortable with their with their headgear on. And it's 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 a support for them. And they have a lot of pride as telling someone to take their hat off might be the same as please put away your phone or take away your phone. It's 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 a sense of pride. And uh, we can work through any questions we have, but the administration is recommending that we uh, remove the headgear requirement. And we acknowledge Fort McCoy's presence to us and the respect as you walk into the door and that sort of thing. Um, I'm not saying that it's disrespectful to have a hat on. I'm not saying that. You can say that times have changed as well. Are all other changes to the um, handbook outlined in red or yellow rather? They should be or struck through, yes. Okay. 
Um, is it possible for this to be, I think it's only on the administrative side. Is it possible? I put it on the, I you put it on the regular one. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, comments from board? I think uh, when I went to high school, oh gosh, that was all the way two months ago in March. Um, I was in Miss Iverson's grad group class and they all said, uh, when I asked them, how can we make SPARTA better, a uh, hat policy came up. So I think they'll be excited about this change, hopefully, if it, if it goes through. Um, any other comments or discussions there? Otherwise, we can do... Uh, be looking to entertain a motion, uh, possibly under consent if people would like to go that route. I'll move the changes to the uh, handbooks on, under consent. I will motion. second that. Motion by Mr. Hendricks, second by Ms. Lopez. Any other discussion? Uh, I believe this one we can do uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is recommended to go to the full board. All right. Moving on to item 3F, discussion recommendation to approve increases to the non-contracted hourly wages. Mr. Russ. All right. For the wages discussion, these are handbook changes. Um, we're looking at increasing our uh, hourly rates for our non-contracted time, our audience control, our lunch supervision, our IEP meetings, and uh, administratively called meetings. Uh, part of this, uh, in order to help to be affordable, uh, we've um, and I've taught, I've communicated this to the the certified staff as well. We're also proposing uh, the first snow, our first emergency closure day. There's, well, for, let me back up. There's nine of these that we're looking to have. So a nine additional, so nine hours of meetings. Part of the, the seven and a half hours in the past, we've always forgiven that first emergency closure day. This would take place for that emergency closure day. So it's it'd be, so the first emergency closure day is, I'm gonna say December 1st. That would cover this time because our staff would not need to work that day. Our certified staff would not be able to work that day. And then there's another hour and a half there. Chances are we'd have another school, we'd have another early, uh, late start or early release. And there's our, there are our nine and a half hours and that we're covered with that. So um, that's one of the suggestions that we're making as well. That used to be in the negotiated agreement before Act 10. And we're bringing this forth so we can continue our mission and vision work and really drive into the, the building decision and building topics. These meetings will be directed by principals uh, and work on building level things to do that. Um, but the, we will let them know ahead of time as much as possible. I know some of our buildings have already started, well, not some of them, they all have started planning what kind of dates they're going to have for these staff meetings so they can let people know. Uh, Co-curriculars. Um, they're most likely we have we have our advisors and coaches that miss for whatever reason. Uh, we'll work to make that up. I know some buildings have an AM meeting and a PM meeting that you know give similar information. It's not the totality, but that would be up to the building principal. If they say coaches, you got to be there. That's up to the building administrator to to make that decision. Also new to this, the uh, prep time. Currently, if you give up your prep which is mostly secondary, uh, you get compensated for that prep. Elementary folks, they divide their kids, so they, in theory, don't give up their prep. We're instituting something new next year. We're recommending that, that they would receive $20 for taking on additional kids. Every day that they take additional kids, that's a $20 uh, increase. They would have to fill out their timesheet, uh, non-contracted timesheet, which you would do for giving your prep or audience control or anything like that. Um, the $20 comes from, it's about $140 for a sub. If we don't get that, we have most like, well, most of our grades are eight teachers in the pre-K through four level or five level. I can't have to look at that, but it would be pre-K through five level. Thank you, Ms. Mansky. Um, so divide by seven, 140, 20 bucks, and there we go. So for any kids, if they take one kid in or two kids in, 
that's what we're going to do because that's the way they fill if they can't find a sub. And once again, that's last resort. We want to fill it with our building subs, with teachers on call. But if we say, hey, Mr. Hendricks is out, we all have to take his class. Three, 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 three. I fill out a timesheet. I have to fill out a timesheet to get that $20. So we're rec recommending those changes to the handbook um, since they're handbook language. But we're looking to increase our hourly rates, but also get something uh, for the certified staff to give up that seven and a half hours instead of just being forgiven you're going to pay it forward, basically. Thank you, Mr. Russ. Questions from board? I, I will. I'll go, go for it. Mr. Russ, would you clarify again what you were saying about, and I'm, I'm certainly in support of paying when teachers take on additional students. Um, because what you're saying is that basically it would it would amount to what we would have had to pay for a sub. So are you saying then that that teacher takes all of the students? The no, it would, it would divvy it up. So if you were a, a third grade teacher with, we're gonna say 24 students, I would get, divide that by seven. So most of us would get three kids and somebody would get four. Okay. And so that's for the whole day. That's not for the hour. That's not no. an hourly rate as no. it is for yes. some of these other That's things. a daily rate. All right. Thank you. Mr. McKenna? I think these raises match what came out of the TCM meeting, correct? Did you figure a, a budgetary impact to all of them or an estimated? Um, we are looking for it to be approximately budget neutral uh, with the reason being that one hour per month after school, that would be less um, administrative called meeting pay that we would have. And then also, the other bigger cost would be the substitute piece of it. And substitute budgeting is a moving target either way um, based on fill rates and things like that. And so this will be one that we'll have to monitor throughout the year because we just don't have good data as of right now. So everything besides substitutes, budget neutral substitutes, we will monitor and report back. And this is part of a, we look, Leah's surprisingly done a very nice job looking at comparables. And this puts us in line with comparables as well. Thank you. Any other questions, board members? Ms. Lopez, did you have one? All right. Uh, no more discussion. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the increases to non-contracted hourly wages and the new language provided to us. As presented, would you like that under consent, Mr. Wells? Yes, under consent. Beautiful. Motion for Mr. Wells and a second. I'll second that. That Mr. Hendricks on the second. Any more discussion? Otherwise, we can do a vote for, let's do all in favor for this motion. Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Motion is recommended to move to the full board. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, we're going to 3H next. So discussion, possible recommendation to possibly adjust District's contribution to Article 521, the national competition expenses. Mr. Blaha. So when Mr. Blaha comes on up, this is just a, an annual review as per policy 521. Uh, currently, we're looking at $600 per student uh, with a max of 5,000 per club. And uh, per policy, this is reviewed annually. 
in board docs, you'll see um, that this affected two clubs. And since Mr. Blaha is up there now, I will let him take it from here. Uh, thank you uh, for reviewing this annually. I'm confident as you see this, uh, um, what the board has provided and changes last year meets most of the needs of our students um, as currently is. It'll be our recommendation just to keep the, what it uh, it's currently at with that. Um, we had DECA and FCCLA uh, uh, earn their way to nationals. Um, however, we also have possibilities just to give the board a scope and everyone else. POSA, FBLA, powerlifting, FFA, robotics, and archery would be possible ones for this as well. That are, are typical. doesn't mean that there can't be more. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? And just as a side note, if there's no action, if, if everyone's happy, there's no action needed because we met the, the requirement by having it on the agenda and, and, and discussing it. But if you wanted to make a motion to keep it as is, that wouldn't be wrong either. That qualifies as the review? Yep. That's a review. It doesn't mean to take action. Thank you. Just so that it is on the books in the meeting, I will go ahead and make a motion to keep Article 521 this year as it is currently. However, that should be said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was a motion from Ms. Lopez to second. keep, second by Mr. McKenna, keep Article 521 as presented. Um, did that original motion include consent? Sir, thank you. And yes, that's a yes. Does that second also support that? Perfect. Okay. Any other discussion from board? Good on that side. Good on that side. All right. Uh, no, uh, actually, let's do a, all in favor for the motion on the table. Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Recommend to the full board. Thank you very much. Let's move on to item 3i. Going through the alphabet here. Discussion, possible recommendation to approve Article 403, District Grading and Assessment Policy. Ms. Mansky. Well, uh, we had an old article about the grading policy that had uh, what, what we had done prior to standards-based grading. And so you'll notice that on the updated version, that first section does include standards-based grading for the elementaries, Montessori, and Innovation STEM Academy. And then the secondary school is very similar to what it had been previously. Uh, we're just making sure that we add these articles that were not addressed in the policies into the policies so that everybody has the same information. So this really brings our grading policies to up to date with what we're currently doing and moving forward in the future as well. Um, the secondary ones are 512. Uh, Ms. Mansky and I talked about while well, sales and high point, they're considered in there. However, part of their charters, they're exempt from this policy. So that's why they can go to a different sort of grading policy per their charter. Ms. Mansky, I noticed that for the secondary schools, the student grade level status has been removed, um, meaning that to attain a sophomore status, you have to have 12 credits, et cetera. Is there a reason for that? Really, it's just based on do they have enough credits to graduate? So does it really matter what their grade is, you know, what they're considered a freshman, sophomore, junior while they're there was our thinking with that one. In addition for standardized testing, if we say, hey, you're a junior, however, if you only have 24 credits, you're still on track to graduate. Do you take the pre-ACT or do you take the ACT? So by, by labeling students by years in high school rather than by credits, it benefits us in the standardized testing as well. Because juniors take the ACT. And freshmen and sophomores take the pre-ACT. Pre-ACT. So it could be in theory, if I only have 12 credits through my three years, I take the pre-ACT, the freshman pre-ACT over and over and over. 
this way. We're working with them. It's staying with their peers. It's best practice. Um, so as, instead of identifying with Mr. Hendricks, you should not sit to the right of me again. Uh, Mr. Hendricks only has 15 credits. Well, do you take your junior meeting then? Or do you have a sophomore meeting? Do you go to your sophomore grad group? We just label them when we continue them when they're, they're years in high school is what we have found realistically what we're doing. So we're just doing what we do in practice rather than saying, hey, you're 12 credits so I can go into being sophomore status. Okay, thank you. Other questions from board? All right. Um, if there's no more discussion, I'll entertain a motion. I will oh. make a motion to change Article 251 as presented. No, I'm sorry, Article 403 as presented under consent. A motion from Ms. Lopez. I'll second. Second from Mr. Hendricks. Any more discussion? Otherwise, we can go to a vote. All in favor with the motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes onto the full board. Thank you. All right. 3J discussion and possible recommendation to approve article 603 use of facilities miss hauser thank you so this is a policy that we had in our old uh policy book and we've actually been working on this for over six months now uh with a combination of myself our district accountant our accounts payable specialist who uh, really works one-on-one -on -one with a lot of the outside groups who use our facilities and the billing related to them. And then also Mr. Blaha as the activities director and in his new role for July 1st of the district facilities coordinator. And what we did is we really dissected our current policy because there were so many instances that it didn't work for what that um, particular uh, request was. And so we found that it had a lot of gray area and wasn't always as helpful as a, of a document. Um, so we did pull uh, similar policies from other local districts to see how theirs was set up and took some of the pieces that we liked of theirs, along with uh, the knowledge of our own district. And so uh, the premise of this policy is that we are more prescriptive with the five different groups that we host in our facilities, uh, with group one really being those groups that are directly funded by the school district or through the community service levy. And the purpose of these groups, I should have said, is the billing that's associated with them, as well as the priority level of who gets the facility if there's multiple requests. So group one would have no charge and gets um, that first priority. Group two would be any groups that are directly affiliated with the Sparta Area School District. And you do have a board policy 9211 that uh, identifies who those groups are. Group three would be any groups not included in group one or two that are still service groups, civic groups, charitable organizations, and educational institutions that are part of our Sparta community. Group four would be those same type of groups that are not part of our community and are pre-approved by our district facilities coordinator, which would be Mr. Blaha. And then finally, group five would be, in essence, everyone else. Um, the policy, we pretty much stopped there. So our previous policy had many more pages, and we thought that those would be more appropriate to put in an administrative rule as there are more directions for how to follow the policy. Um, and then that way, if we need some revisions while we're implementing this under our first year with the district facility coordinator, we're able to do that through the administrative rule. Uh, but if you scroll through the administrative rule just for informational pieces, um, again, it goes into more detail on 
what types of groups or organizations are included in each group, the potential fees and the insurance requirements. And we are still confirming that the insurance requirements are appropriate with our liability carrier. Uh, the administrative rule, which we would make public to groups, also includes the fees for each spaces. Um, and some of those fees we did adjust upwards, uh, again, to be more in line with what our other area districts are charging, as well as we looked at the cost to manage some of these spaces and made sure that we were um, kind of keeping those in line. We also edited the spaces available to those that are most commonly used and those that we are okay with being booked. So for instance, the kitchen spaces used to be on this schedule um, through our most recent nutrition service audit with DPI. They really um, talked to us about the risks of that and that it may not be a good idea. Um, so we agreed and so we removed kitchen spaces, for example. Uh, and then the final piece is if the space is occupied outside of normal custodial hours, um, that we would likely assign a custodian and there could be an addi additional fee associated with that as well. Any questions? Do the changes in fees, will they have an impact on any of our current groups who use the auditorium? They could have an impact. I'm sorry, not the auditorium, our spaces. Yeah, no, <laughs> I heard spaces. So. Thank you. Um, they could have an impact, but we did try to be mindful of keeping the cost for group two and three very similar to what our current costs are. So like group two, for example, there's no fee. And those are the groups that the board has recognized through policy that we want to support. Um, groups three, four, and five, we do need to be cautious to make sure that we're at least recouping the cost of running the space from a utility standpoint and things like that, and that's per DPI. So we tried to keep those costs as minimal as possible while still being in compliance. I have one other question about that. Um, the So we were renting the turf field, and I see that that's quite, that's a, mm -hmm. a larger expense, which thank you for that, yep. <laughs> um, but no concessions. So if they wanted to um, have concessions, that's not a possibility. And is that for the same reason? I had have to defer that to Mr. Russ or Mr. Blaha, why we don't allow concessions. So would you recommend adding concessions or the memorial field to that concession stand list? I see. We will do that. Yep. So if anyone's listening online, the answer was that concession stands as a separate item. However, we only listed Meadowview and Sparta High, so we will add memorial field to that list. Thank you. So then my next question is if they wanted just to use the plaza at Memorial Field, is there a section for that here? Because obviously we have the mm. turf field. We will look to add that as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments from board member? I'll make a comment. That's the greatness of an administrative rule. We can start looking, oh, that's right. We want to do this. We want to do that. We can do that very easily then. If there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion. I guess I just want to say one thing, and whether there's before motion or after, um, I, I know these buildings are, are owned by us and run by us, but they're paid for for the community. Um, I like community being able to use them. 
I don't have a problem with, with charging for things. I, I just really want to make sure that we aren't limiting the access of anything. And, and it's kind of hard going through these and, and figuring out which group fits in what which group. Um, so I'd, I'd like us to really, maybe this next year, well, while we're getting requests to be very, very, very mindful of supporting the civic organizations who do use our facilities. Thank you, Mr. McKenna. I'll move approval or uh, recommendation for approval of the revisions to Article 603 and the consent. Motion for Mr. Hendricks to approve Article 603 with the revisions under consent. I'll second. Second by Mr. McKenna. Any more discussion? Questions? Otherwise, we can go all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes to recommend to the full board. All right. Look at that. Marathon. Uh, item 3K, announcements information, Mr. Russ. Uh, yeah, some upcoming dates. Just want to remind some people. Uh, our board uh, goal and objective workshop on Wednesday of this week, 530 Meadowview uh, LMC. Uh, interactive workshop to start to develop a board goals and objectives for the upcoming year. Uh, full board, May 22nd, Committee of the Whole, June 12th, full board, the 26th, and I really want to highlight the following dates were uh, the sales graduations, uh, May 16th, High Point, May 19th, and SHS, May 26th. Um, these are community events, so all board members are welcome along with all the other uh, uh, public as well to celebrate our successes of our graduates who've worked very hard to get there. Uh, facilities and auditorium update. We gave that kind of in the beginning. Um, Bray and Associates will be here on Wednesday uh, to talk with our faculty again and our uh, our administrative team to move that process forward uh, and work with the Theater Booster Club and other stakeholders uh, on Wednesday on Wednesday as well, uh, along with that um, and the report to the full board on May 22nd. It won't be the final final report, but it will give an update of where we're at to give a really good idea uh, about how to move forward. And as we talked about, as we talked about earlier, you know, really focusing on the auditorium, most likely if the board wanted to move in that direction about, you know, maybe what the current envelope would look like or the future envelope, I would say, uh, moving forward. Um, lots of great things happening, uh, a lot of field trips, a lot of activities, uh, the weather's starting to change, which is great, uh, a lot of great energy. As I walk through the hallways, um, the one thing was um, May the 4th, so May the 4th be with you, so I wished all the Herman kids May the 4th be with you. Several of them got that, and one of them said he was Darth Vader, and I said, well, remember Darth Vader converted into good on that. And I said, I hope I didn't blow anything from, from maybe he was only on Star Wars. I hope he wasn't there. Um, but anyway, a lot of good positive uh, going on in our in our district. Uh, very a lot to be proud of. And I really want to give a shout out to our senior parents and families who have worked so hard to get them to this, to almost to the finish line. And I know they'll continue to be the support, but uh, a special shout out to our senior families who are working very hard to make sure their kids have what they need to be ready for that full secondary goals of theirs. Thank you very much. Any other announcements from the board? With this being Teacher Appreciation Week, I just wanna say thank you to all of our teachers. And I know that the district has the philosophy that everyone in our school is a teacher. So thank you to all of our staff, truly, honestly, everyone out in the audience as well. We appreciate you. We're here for you. Thank you. 100%. Thank you. Anything else? Otherwise, we can move on to the long one. Have fun, Colin. All right. <clears throat> all right. Next item, we're at uh, closed session 4A. So for discussion and possible action for the Board of Education to move to closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statutes 19.85 parent 1, parent C, parent E, parent F for the purpose of 
one, discussing the Board of Education's negotiation strategy with the Spartan Education Association, and two, considering employment compensation of administrators, classified staff, and middle management staff. Such discussion may include the potential establishment of another proposal for base wage negotiations with the Sparta Education Association. Can I entertain a motion to move to closed session? I'll make that motion. Motion for Mr. McKenna. I'll second that. Second for Mr. Wells. Uh, let's do a roll call. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Mr. McKenna? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Ms. Behrens? Yes. Mr. Burns Gilbert? Yes. All right. We are now in closed session. It's 7.40. I'd recommend us convening at 7.45 in the LMC. Perfect. Some.